Hi everyone, so this is the second part of the lecture on genetic polymorphisms. So we continue with Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So it is a principle uh, that proposes theoretical state uh, in which allele frequencies remain constant in one particular population through multiple generations uh, in the absence of evolution. So for example here in reproduction we have uh, genetic components from sperm and the genetic components from the eggs. So we have uh, two alleles from the sperm, A, A here, uh, A capital and A uh, small letter here, as well as the eggs. They both have um, two alleles. Each, so each of these allele can either be P or Q. So P is the dominant allele and Q is the variant allele. So this Punnett square uh, depicts the probability of generating all the possible genotypes during um, reproduction because we can either have these three genotypes, which is homozygous um, wild type or heterozygous or... So this should be both a small letter, it's actually homozygous variant. So we can either have three of these genotypes. So these are the assumptions in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. The first one is that there should only be random mating that occurs. Uh, for example, individuals must pair by chance. The second one, no migration of individuals into or out of the population so that no gene flow can occur. Third one, no genetic mutations must occur so that new alleles do not enter the population. The fourth one, no natural selection can occur so that certain alleles are not selected for or against so it should be natural selection. The fifth one, is that the population must be large so that no genetic drift can cause the allele frequencies to change. So based on these assumptions, Hardy-Weinberg equation is used to calculate allele frequency so that we can use it to measure whether the allele frequency or genotype frequency that we have in our population differs from the equilibrium. So we can also calculate the genotype frequency with this equation. So P here defines the allele frequency of the dominant or the reference allele. P is the allele frequency for the recessive or the, or the variant allele. And P plus Q should equal to 1. So this is the equation for allele frequency. So the second equation is for genotype frequency. So P squared is the percentage of homozygous dominant individuals. P, Q squared is the percentage of homozygous recessive individuals. And uh, 2PQ here is the percentage of heterozygous individuals. So for example here, uh, if the G is the dominant allele and A is the variant allele, so GG, which is the homozygous dominant, so we can mark it as P squared in the equation. So let's see the example. For example, this SNP in gene v VCORC1. So we have a SNP in this location in which G base is substituted by A and it is associated with an increased sensitivity to warfarin. So for example, we have a population of 100 patients. So if we genotype all of them, the number of patients with GG genotype is 49, where else the number of patients with heterozygous is 42 and homozygous variants 9. So we can see, we can say here that the genotype frequency for GG, which is homozygous uh, wild type, is 0 
heterozygous 0.42 and 0.09 for homozygous variant. So 0.49 here is P, P squared, whereas 0.42 is 2PQ and 0.09 is squared 2. Because P squared is 0.49, so P is 0.7, and Q squared is 0.09, so Q is 0.3. So if we add up P plus Q, it should equal to 1. The second example is uh, CYP2C9 star 3. It is associated with the reduced metabolism of warfarin. The results from the genotyping analysis showed that 40% of your samples are homozygous variant for CYP2C9 star 3. So what is the allele frequency of the reference allele? The percentage of patients with homozygous variant is 40%. So you put 40% here in, the, in this uh, column and 100 it should be the total. So now we know that Q squared is 0 0.4. So what is the allele frequency for the reference allele? So reference allele is P. So if we know that Q squared is 0 0.4, Q should be 0 0.63. So using this equation, P plus Q equals to 1. So P should be 1 minus 0 0.63. So it should be 0 0.37. Okay, next, what is the frequency of heterozygous individuals? So they're asking for the frequency of um, individuals with 2PQ. So now if we know already that P is 0 0.37 and Q is and Q is 0 0.63. Heterozygous genotype is represented by 2PQ. So 2 times 0 0.37 and 0 0.63 equals to 0 0.47. So 0 0.47 is the uh, frequency of heterozygous individuals or we can also put here as 47%. So now we come to the gene nomenclature. So there are specific ways to write a gene name. So we cannot simply name a gene based on our name or our favorite food, for example. So each gene name is assigned by Human Gene Nomenclature Committee. So each approved gene symbol must be unique. It should not be the same as uh, the previous genes. So the symbols are short form representations or abbreviations of a descriptive uh, gene name. Symbols should only contain Latin letters and Arabic numerals. Symbols should not contain any punctuation. It should not contain G for gene. And it should not contain any references to species, for example, H to specify that it is a human gene, so it should not have that uh, letter. For example, here is SIP 2 d 6 star 5 or ABC, uh, ABCA1. These are the databases of genetic variations that are useful if you want to search for any SNPs or other genetic variations. It might be useful if you are working in genetics lab or for R&D or industry or if you are offering genetic services to your patient in the future. So you want to look, um, so you want to have a look at more details on certain polymorphisms of interest. So more specifically in pharmacogenomics are the pharmacogenomics related databases in which you can find a more detailed information on the effect of certain genetic variations on drug response or drug toxicity. So most widely studied pharmacogenetic uh, predictors or parameters are those involving cytochrome P450 enzymes which are responsible for drug metabolism and also drug transporter proteins. So these are the examples of, uh, of the websites or the web pages. So this is dbSNP. This is Snipedia. So you can have all the information on the location of these SNP, what are the effects seen in the cellular function and also the effect on the clinical response of patients who have this um, 
variations, especially when it relates to drug use. So this is Ensemble. So you can type in your RS number of the STIP and you can get all the information including uh, the population genetics, phenotype data. So how far are we in terms of pharmacogenomics? Up until 2015, and, and I believe it increases some more now, about 15% of drugs licensed by the European Medicines Agency, EMA, and more than 130 drugs registered by the US FDA contain pharmacogenetic data in the product information. So that means before the drug is licensed to be marketed, so it must undergo pharmacogenomic studies in order to identify where, what are the pharmacogenetic predictors that might affect uh, the drug response or drug toxicities. So the pharmacogenetic data should be included in the product leaflet when the drug is ready to be marketed. So this is Amplichip SIP450 which is the first approved pharmacogenetic test by the FDA. So it's a chip that has a, uh, a panel of SIP450 enzymes in which that are important for determining drug response. And this is the example of DNA passport that are being uh, used by Erasmus uh, MC Rotterdam in Netherlands. So the patients, the patients can uh, actually send their sample, blood sample, to this lab, and they will do the pharmacogenetic testing for this list of genes. And the patient will be provided with this DNA passport that list all the relevant pharmacogenetic information involving several genes that are responsible for drug response and also drug toxicity. So there, are, there is a global uh, drive towards uh, the implementation of pharmacogenetics and it is uh, a network of collaboration between many countries. So in Asia, we also have a collaboration uh, towards the implementation of uh, pharmacogenetics. So in Japan, we have 100 weekend pharmacogenes panel in which uh, they gather 60, uh, 60 predictors in uh, metabolizing enzyme and 37 in uh, drug, transporter, uh, gene, drug transporter genes. In Korea, they already have more than 10 pharmacogenomics service practiced. For example, in warfarin use, antipsychotics, antidepressant, and drug-induced ADR cases. In Thailand, they have the translational pharmacogenomics personalized and physician medicine PPM initiative in which they have already given tests, pharmacogenetic tests for patients before they even undergoing uh, any certain drug therapy. So they will be tested first before they uh, they are being given certain medication that are risky for them. So these are the references. So thank you very much.